Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you from us at Yup Master. Thank you for joining us today and today we'll take you a brief explanation to a little bit of zoology. Before that, I know that we are all going through a very tough time today. It seems the world is coming to an end. All of our patience is being tested at this moment, isn't it my dear children? Well, what I'd like you to make sure is that life is too short for us to be waiting for things to happen on their own. What we need to do, we need to gear up. We are keeping ourselves prepared for tomorrow. Let's just take one day at a time. We all know that Corona is going to end sooner or later. Our expert scientists are working on it and I am sure my dear children, we will pass through this. But during this phase, we do not want to lose our valuable precious days. Many of you here might have passed your 10th standard exams. Many of you here might have passed 11th and moving to 12th. You all know this is a very crucial phase for all of us. All right, the world is also going through a tough time. But at this tough time, we need to keep ourselves positive. We need to make sure that we are going to stay geared up so that when the corona does finally end, we are just where we are supposed to be or rather we are a step ahead. Imagine children, right now you have the luxury of staying home and you don't have to travel to colleges, don't have to travel to classes. You attend your video lectures with us at Yap Master. Imagine that. But children, we want to take one day at a time. We want to believe that our faith is much bigger, is much stronger than our fear would be. We don't want the coronavirus to overcome us. We want to overcome it and we want to prove ourselves stronger. During this journey, we'll make sure that we don't waste our time, right? One thing is there. Whichever students, all of us here, we've decided to go for, we all have a goal. We want to take science. Yes, you all have a dream, don't you? The main point is how bad do you want this dream? The dream, however much important it is, is equally important is how you're going to work yourself to getting yourself towards that dream. Isn't it? Yes, so many of you sitting here want to be there, want to be in the doctor's panel of so many important hospitals, don't we? How bad do you want this children? Don't you want this? Yes or no? Well, to working towards a dream, do you actually think it's going to be just a day's, a day's work, a week's work or a month's work? No, it's not. It's all about staying consistent in what we are doing. Yes, when you're working for anything, children, one day work, two days work is not going to take you there. It's all about how much, how much you want it and however bad you want it, children, this is going to make you work towards it. This is going to make you strive towards it. What I'd like you, what I'd like you to understand is a small example. You want to become a doctor. What I'd like you to do is right now focus only on your textbooks and on your, on your studies. When you focus on your studies and when you're going to give it your best, there will be, I agree children, there will be some days which will be low, there will be some days which will be high. But what do we want to do? We want to make sure that our high days come all more and they're going to overcome our low days. Staying consistent is the key, my dear children. These two years or this one year, whichever you have left until your entrance exams, if you stay consistently with us and if you keep on studying the right way, the smart way, then my dear children, your goal is not far away. What I'd like you to do is just concentrate on your work. Do not think about what is going to be the outcome. Whatever is the outcome later on, children, we will take care of that. But right now, our focus right now is your work and your concentration maximum to our lectures. So children, I'd like you to understand that the only key to your success is if you keep on 
playing steady you know that slow and steady is ultimately always going to win the race my dear children and we have to keep going although the world around us seems to be falling apart but we're going to stay strong you and us here at yup master together we're going to continue this and we will make it happen so that none of our days here are going to go a waste and even though there is a lockdown we are making the full use of it all right so kids please i request you to stay inspired and continue with us watching our lectures today i'm going to give a brief a small introduction to a very interesting and lovely topic and that topic is of tissue which tissue the fluid connective tissue which we know as blood so children i know you know a little bit of this so let's just take a small revision Let's see what exactly are the parts of blood. When we want to know about blood, how do we see the parts of it? If I take blood in a test tube and if children if I'm going to centrifuge it, what I see is on centrifugation, this blood is going to be separated into its components. So that brings us to the components of blood. And the components of blood my dear children would be first there is a solid part which is going to be settling down and then there is a liquid part which would be floating up so my dear children the solid part here are nothing but the blood cells or the blood corpuscles and the liquid part of blood which is floating up is called as the plasma the liquid part of blood is known as plasma so dear children now what we see is blood is a fluid and because blood is a fluid naturally the plasma content is going to be more than that of the content of the cells so we see here that plasma forms around 55% of blood whereas children the red blood cells white blood cells the the platelets all the blood cells form to around 45% of blood so we see over here this what you are seeing this whole part which has settled down is what are our blood cells comprising of rbcs wbcs and platelets so here it is and above that is the plasma that is the liquid part of blood now a new term maybe for all of you when i want to calculate only how many rbcs are present in blood when i am talking about the percentage of rbcs present in blood my dear children this is a new term for you and this is going to be called as the hematocrit what is hematocrit it is the percentage of rbcs in the blood percentage of rbcs all right now when we talk about the liquid part of blood my dear children i'd like you to know that liquid part of blood it is more than that of solid and the plasma that is there in that also 90 to 92% of that plasma is nothing but water so 90 to 92% is water and the remaining 8 to 10% is comprising of solids now when i talk about solids solids means they are going to be extremely minute particles but my dear children they are not settling down they are staying in the plasma out of these solids which is the most important ones the most important ones are the proteins and these proteins which are found in plasma my dear children are known as the plasma proteins let's have a look which they are and let's have a look how we're going to remember them all right plasma proteins found in our blood are of the names first it's called as serum albumin the second one called as serum globulin the third one heparin the fourth one fibrinogen and the fifth one prothrombin so these are the plasma proteins which are found in our blood now what we'll see is how are we going to remember this we'll remember this by the alphabets half p g so when we have half pg over here look at the names of all the plasma proteins my dear children where h would stand for heparin all right a would stand for albumin then f would stand for fibrinogen then p would stand for prothrombin and the last one g for globulin so we have half pg which is a indication for our plasma proteins heparin albumin fibrinogen 
prothrombin and globulin these are the most important ones out of these many of these are going to be helping in our clot formation too yes my dear children which means that besides platelet also there are factors which are going to be helping in our clot formation so let's see ahead do you remember this test tube that we had over here okay this test tube had blood in it what did we do we had centrifuged it on centrifugation we saw that it was splitting up when we see only the plasma part and allow it to set allow it to settle for a little while what we see here my dear children is even from the plasma only the plasma a small blood clot will be formed too imagine children i'm talking only about the plasma part from the plasma a small part of clot will be formed why is that there this means that there is something present in the plasma which is going to initiate the formation of a clot so my dear children when i see that plasma and those factors which are there you can call them as platelet factors or we may call them as clotting factors there are 13 clotting factors my dear children we don't have to remember all of them but we have to remember three important ones what we see is when we have the plasma and when we have the when we remove the clotting factors from it what is remained behind my dear children is known as serum remember serum albumin serum globulin our plasma protein so that is serum all right also children the clotting factors remember i told you there was a total of how many there was a total of 13 Now out of these 13 the most important ones i would like you to remember today were one of the factors remember those plasma proteins first fibrinogen then i'd like you to remember prothrombin also do you know my dear children calcium is present in blood too we need calcium in our blood as well not only in our bones but also in our blood so even calcium is a clotting factor which we will see in our like regular lectures that it's going to help in formation of a clot look at our blood cells here we have the three types of blood cells which are red blood cells white blood cells and platelets all right since it is a cell we'll call it as site so we have the three sites since it is an r blood red blood cells rbc i'll call it as red so it's called as erythro so that's an erythrocyte then we have a leukocyte and then we have a thrombocyte where are all these formed the formation of all these blood cells happen in the bone marrow which bone marrow children it happens in the red bone marrow and formation is called as poiesis so children we have the erythropoiesis we have the leukopoiesis and then we have the thrombopoiesis so children this was a brief explanation and a brief introduction to the topic of blood similarly we will have these 5 minute topics every day and hope you stay tuned with us at yup master so please download the app we have a live interaction section session every day and children there is a there is a forum where you are able to post all your doubts all right so there me and all my colleagues all of our all of the teachers here are willing and happy to help you with all your doubts so stay tuned and stay safe